suppose this, this thicket allows me to tell you a little bit about how easy it is to get lost and turned around in the bush. When everything looks the same, when you're walking through a uniform bush like this that has very little in terms of landmarks, you've got to be very careful about getting turned around. And as you can see from the uniform colored sky above us, there's no telling where east or west is when you're walking around. So I know when I left camp this morning, I walked generally in a south, uh, southeasterly direction. And to go home, I need to walk generally in a northwesterly direction. But where is northwest and where is southeast, especially when you're starting to have to go this way around trees and that way around trees, it becomes very difficult. One of the things that you can use in this particular area is the signs of plants and animals that leave behind. Um, Mongoose will tend to use termite mounds like this and they will almost always defecate on the more sunny northern slope of, of, the, uh, of the, the termite mound. This particular area doesn't have any mongoose colonies in and so what would we use next? The next thing that you could use is either prevailing wind or you could use where plants grow. And there's an interesting, a very interesting plant growth here which We'd have to take it into context, of course, but uh, there's a very interesting plant growth here. Another one is using, hold on. So I'm just cupping my one good ear. Sounds like some kudu barking far away, but they've stopped. Doing this, giving yourself kudu ears, is a fantastic way of funneling more sound into your ears. It works very, very well. So wherever you're sitting, without looking ridiculous, of course, cup your ears and face it. So look at somebody that's talking far away and then cup your ears and you'll notice that the, it'll amplify the sound. And we use it to find directions out here. Kudu's barking. Anyway, come and have a look here. So. Here, we've got some moss that's busy growing on the tree. Now, you've got to be careful about prevailing wind um, when you're using this, but generally the moss that grows on a tree in the southern hemisphere, south of the Tropic of Capricorn like we are now, will be on the southern side of the tree. So, when you have a look around this tree, you'll notice that there's more moss on the one side than the other. And that is because this moss is growing on the southern side of the tree. So I now know that south is roughly there and north is roughly there. And that allows me then to, th to remember that east is there and west is there. That means home is there and we're heading in this direction here. Now I say, so you can use that. Another way of doing it is by looking at the angle of the top of a termite mound. In an area that is uh, where you have a lot of termite mounds, um, as the termite mound builds up and goes higher, the sun will, will dry the northern side of the tower first. So as the termites build it with their saliva, the tower will contract on the one side first, and as they get up, they'll tend to lean towards the northern side, you know, south of the Tropic of Capricorn again, where the sun is always in the northern part of the sky, lean slightly more towards the north. You can then take an, an average, you need to take an average, you can't just use one. Take an average of where they're leaning most towards, and that'll give you the direction north. So on a day like today, where you've got a uniform bush, you're walking around in circles, you don't know where the sun is, you have to still remember how to tell direction if you don't have a compass or you know you don't have a GPS or you can't just phone someone to come fetch you. Um, you know, so one of those things, little bush survival skills 101. Let's go and have a look at this tree. There's been some interesting birds there. Becky um, you, you just asked the question I suppose a lot of people ask from time to time, is it safe for us to walk out here? Um, you know, are we not going to be bumping into something like the lions that we're looking for and what will they do if we bump into them on foot? Becky, um, man has been walking around in these forests basically since we arrived here, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago. And animals and man have got this understanding. We create distance when we find one another, unless there's a very good reason to stay put. Um, and in which case I'm going to let you know that I'm staying put. So there's this communication that happens with, with animals here. We as humans and in their environment in the 21st or 22nd century, whatever we're in at the moment, um, 
we have to respect the fact that this is the last place where these animals can live free. And so I take on a very humble approach when I'm walking through here, and it's full respect to the animal. I'm not here to chase them out of this environment. I'd rather create distance. Um, and using this approach, using this, uh, this humble approach as to how we interact with these animals here on foot, realizing that we're big and we're scary and we're humans and, you know, for thousands of years we've been hunting these animals for food. If I were to see an elephant and I couldn't approach um, that elephant without it seeing me, I'd choose to move away. If we're walking through the bush looking for these lions, which we'd really like to do to try and show you them, and one growls at us in the bush, we're not going to walk closer to instigate a charge or instigate a reaction, a negative reaction from those animals. We're going to create some space. And we're going to do that. We know where the lions are. We bring you to them in some manner or form. We bring other rangers in to have a look at it. People come and spend money in these places. And so the cycle sort of continues. So yes, it's dangerous if you don't obey the rules here and you don't have a humble approach, in my opinion, and you don't know how to communicate with these animals. When something growls at you, it's saying, hey, I don't want you to come any closer, and you create distance. If you can't approach that animal safely or without disturbing them uh, in some way, then create some distance, walk away, go and look for a different animal to look at. So yes, it's dangerous. Yes, we expect to walk into things here all the time. Yes, we have to look out. I mean, these animals are big. They've got a reputation for killing people. I mean, elephant, leopard, lion, buffalo, rhino, all kill multiple people every year. Um, but it's not something that I'm, I think it would be scarier living or working in a city, to be honest. You, you stand more chance of being in a car accident than you do here of having a head on with an elephant.